No, I won't ever fall down You'll always take my hand To show me that I can And through it all I will stand No, you'll never leave me You watch my spirit grow Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and with me today is Rosa Owens, my co-host. Rosa, nice to see you. Same here. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, and yourself? This is the day the Lord has made, so yes. we choose to rejoice and, and be glad in it. Amen. amen. God, amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. And we welcome you to our, our program, The Truth Shall Set You Free. The truth of knowing Jesus Christ in a personal way will take you and set you free from fear of death. Uh, so many people fear of dying. Um, and there are so many other people that don't fear of dying and they c kill themselves and commit suicide, which is totally of the Satan's realm because God gives life. And nobody can take life except the Lord gives life. But the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy people from having a relationship with Jesus. When you have Christ in your life and when you've made peace with God through the blood of Jesus, you, you don't fear death because you know that you know that you know that when you're absent from the body, you're going to be present with the Lord because your sins are forgiven. Uh, no religion, none on earth, does the person who they follow, who's been dead for years and years and years, has the answer for sin. Um, they just say, you know, be a good person and uh, do good and you'll, you'll get to heaven. And that's the farthest from the truth because nobody's good. When they call Jesus good, he said, don't call me good. There's only one good, and that's the Father in heaven. Um, so there's a lot of people in heaven right now who have done bad things, real bad things, but they've come to Christ, and their sins are forgiven, and Christ has changed their life, and they're in heaven now. And then there's people that are not in heaven, but they're in hell, and there's no such thing as purgatory. Um, that's a a religious aspect of their tradition. There's nothing in the Bible about purgatory. Once you're um, out of this body and dead and in hell, it's for eternity. And then after Judgment Day in Revelation chapter 20, it's the, the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And that's the final destination forever in torture and pain. And God doesn't want nobody to go there. But when you refuse the blood of Jesus, his only son that he gave up for our sins, that's where a person uh, ends up in, in eternal damnation. And, and God doesn't want that for you. You know, Jesus paid the price so that you can know the truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Problem is, is in America today, as well as the whole world, uh, it's lies are accepted. People lie, 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 lie with a straight face, lie lie and, and, and people believe the lies and it's abomination uh, to the Lord. That's one of the things that God hates, lies. And it was a lie that uh, Satan told Eve um, that caused her to bite that fruit and cause this world to be in chaos like it is. So we have a guest today that's going to share about his testimony, how um, he just lived a lie, not knowing the truth of Jesus Christ. So, Rosa, would you uh, introduce our guest, please? Sure, sure. Oh. Wayne LeBlanc, welcome to our program. How Thank are you, you doing very today? much. I'm doing great. Good, good. So we had to give God the glory. Sure. So we, uh, you lived a lie most of your life because you really didn't know the truth. So can you tell us how you were raised and what you went through? Well, um, Catholic. Mm -hmm. Went to Catholic schools, uh, high school and grammar school. And uh, I tell people not, not to disrespect nuns at all but they were tough I tell people it was like going to a boot camp for the Marines mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things they used to say and as a young child I realized they used to tell us they were married and again I think their, their particular 
vow they were married to Jesus. And in my head, I'm always thinking, because they had the squished face, uh, you know, a habit wearing. And I said, God is God. He can pick anybody he wants. Why would he want to be married to this mean nun that was, I conceived, <laughs> I conceived it as mean, but, uh, you know, not strict. Again. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Very they were strict, strict and we needed it, but uh, yes. who liked, you know, you didn't like it at the time. So I was, um, in my family life, I grew up in, uh, my, my mother was Italian, and we grew up on the same street, 10 Italian families, all my relatives on the same street, which was, it was good. Yes, uh, I mean, good. World War Three didn't happen? <laughs> no, well, we, everything happened right in the street. <laughs> we thought that, you know, we had our own baseball team, our own football team, whatever. You we have did. to go any place. We, we had to go out, <laughs> outside neighbor to get some uh, opposition, but, uh, yeah. you know, my uncles, you know, they'd have fist fights right in the, right in front of us. We thought that was yeah. normal life, you know? Yeah. Then they'd love each other next day or whatever. <laughs> they worked it out. <laughs> Bl yeah. Black guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We just thought that Bruises. was, uh, that was a normal upbringing. So did you go to church on Sunday with well, your family? Occasionally, like yeah. everybody, you know, the, uh -huh. the, the Easter. The traditional. Traditional Easter. Uh -huh. You know, you got your Easter suit and then uh, Christmas. Being in Catholic school, we had it, we did go to church because we had to go certain during school. I mean, being in Catholic school. Yeah. So, uh, and then for us, that was, for the boys, that was always like, uh, you know, you did everything you could not to start laughing. Then you get the hysterical giggles, get whacked by the nun. <laughs> and then yeah, whacked in the back. I mean, not, not whacked in the uh, mafia sense, but whacked <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with no, the please. ruler. Please, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but as a child, my mother had certain. Um, uh, she was sick a lot. She had uh, blood clots. She had uh, she had her kidney removed at one point. Oh wow! So that she was away from us a lot. She was in hospitals, you know, all the time. And as a as a child, it wasn't discussed with us, but. You know, being in an Italian family and in an Italian neighborhood, it was always being discussed, and you overheard it. You, yes. you, you know, so we knew, and we knew there were, when there were times when she was near death, and you know she'd get the last right. So I would, as a young child, I would pray, and I understood who you know Jesus was. I, I understood that he was God. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, I, I'm, and I'm sure I learned this in the Catholic school. So I did pray to him, ask you know that my mother would live, and uh, you know just be with us that more than anything, be with us. My father worked seven days a week, so he wasn't around. He was gone before we got up, and he got home usually when we were even we were going. To, we were either in bed or so away who, from who, something. Who who was who was the father and my mother in the house? Well, what happened was I took. We we did have we had uh, I'd say uh, b babysitters slash housekeepers, mm. different ones, and then some relatives would come in. Uh, it was always a lot of turmoil with that too, because one, you know, people are are, are reprimanding you or trying yes. to are, are being strict with you on their own terms, and you're not yes. used to ten different types of uh, of uh, discipline. Discipline. So, um, must have been tough on yeah. you. Was well, I was the oldest, so what I did, I took on as a child what I thought of a father or a parent should wow, do. So I kind of, I kind of ruled my brothers and sisters, you know, mm. in what I thought was the right way to do. You know, yeah. I, I I was demanding at some points, so and they would. They they would tell you the same thing, you know. The, I used to make them go to the store and get me my donuts and a <laughs> and a Coca Cola, but for that they were protected. You know, nobody. If anybody picked on them, it was it was it was myself that had to had to take the I had to take it on. You know, whether I got beat up or not, they were protected. So, um, you know, so that was that was a life, and it was like like any child. I I I, I wasn't equipped to be a parent, but I did what I thought was right. Mm -hmm. And then you know, then arguing with. How babysitters or whatever you want to call them. What do they call them now? Nannies. Uh, nannies. Right? nannies. <laughs> so how did this affect you when you went to school? You know, I was very quiet, uh, very withdrawn, always in my head. I, I was always thinking about what had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. you, 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 you just, what's it going to be like when I go home? And then when my mother was home, when she wasn't in the hospital, she was she had become addicted to uh, tranquilizers and pain medications. Oh. So that was oh. like, you know, we never knew how she was going to react right. oh. to anything. I mean, she could just explode uh, over anything. <clears throat> over yeah. anything. You, you must have had some uh, grieving and, and fear. Yeah, you know what? Um, I, like like today they have these uh, the, the grief counselors. And yeah, stuff. Back then. We right. had nothing. So I didn't really know who to talk to about it. So I kept it in. I oh. mostly kept it in. And again, yeah, you are, I, I guess, uh, somebody asked me recently, because I'm in a crazy business, do I ever, uh, uh, you know, get anxious or or any anxiety? And I said, I have no idea, because this is how I live every day, so I don't have anything to compare it to. Yeah. You know, and I think that was pretty much the way it was when I was a child. Did you become bitter? Did you take it out on? You know, uh, 
Another kid? I wasn't a bully. No, I, I mean, I would definitely stick up for my brothers and sister in any situation where they were being picked on. Mm -hmm. um, I did, as years went on, I, I, I started to drink. And I always had fights. I did have fights. I mean, but it wasn't something, it was either I was small, uh, I, did, I just couldn't, I would just stand up and fight. That was, that was, the, that was it. So, so you started drinking at an early age. Is that what you're saying? 13 or 14 years That's old. That's young, yes. I uh, actually, in uh, my father's, <coughs> my mother's Italian, my father's ca uh, Canadian, we went to a wedding in, Italy, in, uh, in Canada. So I had no idea, never had a drink. And the waiter came around at the wedding and asked me if I'd like a drink. So I saw the people drink. I said, give me a, a six pack of ale. <laughs> a six a pack, pack in a, a, at a table sitting down and sure enough he brings it over and I drank the six pack and that's the last thing I remember you know it's like that was you, my first drinking experience and a blackout you, you blacked out blacked out now you would think maybe if you blacked out after drinking that you wouldn't want to drink anymore again, but yeah. that's not what probably happened to you right? I don't think it happened I, 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 no. with most people yeah. you know you just, you, everybody's gone any drinker has always gone through the situation I'll never drink again no. this is it I'm not, I can't take it. You wake up hungover. I'm not touching a drink until you sober up a little bit after the hangover, and and then you do you it again. have one drink, and then two. Did, did that affect you in school, Wayne? Um, well, yeah, yes, it did. You know, I'm, I'm sure I, I, I wasn't. Uh, I, uh, I probably would have been diagnosed with ADD back then because I, mm. I just had a my t I, I attention span was not there. Um, I was uh, I was able to uh, always cram before an exam and ace an exam. But my schoolwork before that would be terrible, so then it would affect my, Great. which I would argue with them. <laughs> I go, if I know the, if I know the stuff, why can't I get the A? Forget the mm -hmm. that I wasn't here, you know, thirty percent of the time. That way. No, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and when you when we're going mm -hmm. through school, with all the um, anxiety within and trouble within, no teacher recognized your, your continence, or no teacher no, you know, no. recognized anything or said anything to you no. about it. I don't, I don't know if um, I didn't react well to anybody, you know, coming to me with that stuff. So I think maybe um, not that I should have been feared, but I think people were afraid to actually talk to me about certain things. I know my my family never did. My father never did. Nobody ever brought it. Was, it was hidden. Yeah, no, it was, it was the, the conversation were yeah. hidden, but it was yeah. obvious what I was doing. No, no but it was hidden. The conversation. Oh yeah, they were never in just your family, up. just in general. Oh yeah, they just you know I I one time in my later teens uh, came home and I. I passed out in the driveway and I must have crawled under the car maybe for warmth wow you know wow. and my father came out but and uh, you know got me up helped me inside but it was never mentioned again after that wow. nothing talked you about know, it no. don't you do it or no. reprimand oh, do you, have a problem, you? Son? yeah what's we, going can on we help you yeah. did, 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 now you said you, you you passed out after you drank the first time w was that um, prevalent in your life Wayne that you would drink and pa pass out yeah, pretty pretty much uh, my whole teenage life into my adult life, uh, almost every weekend. I, I was able to keep sober and not drink during the week when I had to work, uh, and that got a little bit towards the, the later end of my drinking. It got a little. I, I did drink more during the week, but uh, I was able to somehow not be affected at work, which mm. almost made it easier for me to drink. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wasn't the problem. You, you know. Um, how many people um, in jail? You know, most people think that they're in jail because of drug addiction. When I say drug, alcohol is a drug. Mm -hmm. but, but you're talking about heroin, cocaine, and, you know, things of that nature. How many people are, more people are in prison in the United States from alcohol, drug addiction, and, and so many people pass out and don't know they murdered somebody, they raped somebody, that they were in a four-car car accident, and it's, and it's, um, it's prevalent. Yes. You know, so the grace of God, Wayne, kept you, kept yeah. you yeah. from doing crazy things, from maybe drinking and driving and getting in accidents in the car. Yeah. Because he had a plan for your life. Yeah, well, and you was more self-destructive because then you started going from alcohol to drugs, right? Yeah, cocaine. There wasn't enough, the alcohol. Yeah. I did some drugs early on uh, as a teenager. And, you know, they're, they're, uh, well, back then there were second oils and two and oils, tranquilizers and some speed. But uh, my uh, drug of choice was alcohol. And then in my late 20s, I was introduced to cocaine. Mm. And that helped my drinking. It was as, as simple as that. I was able to <laughs> be a wide awake 
Oh, oh, oh yeah, well, cocaine can keep less you up. Less blackouts, though, I can tell you. Uh, yeah, less yeah, less keep you blackouts. Up, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Then I realized what I was doing, and I still I still did it. Um, you tell a quick story. on I, A friend of mine, we went out. Uh, I was in my early 20s. We went out to a local football game that we had played for and went to see the game. Got drunk, totally, you know, drunk. He ends up driving because I couldn't. He, we, uh, he decided I couldn't drive home. So next day, I wake up in jail. I wake up the next day, I'm in jail. I have no idea why, why I'm there. Yeah. Like I said before. Yeah. So they let me out. So I figured, okay, I must not have done something, well, something bad. really bad. They're letting <laughs> me out. And then uh, he let me out. The, they let me out the back door in a local jail. And like and I'm looking for my car. Like I drove there, you know. So I'm, I walk up <laughs> back and <laughs> I still hung over and oh, drunk. Oh, oh. I go, uh, did I by any chance drive here? And they go, get out of here, right? So you didn't even know. No, I get mm -hmm. home. I ended up walking home, and my wife and my kids weren't home. And I'm saying. Heck happened? You no, know, I called my friend. I said, "What happened last night?" He goes, "I brought you home." I go, "You know, I, I don't know what I did, but my wife must have me arrested because I ended up oh. in jail." So I go, "You brought me home?" Yeah. He said, third house on the right, on Melbourne Road." I go, "John, I live on wrong house. I live wrong on Mel house. I live on <laughs> third house, <laughs> <on> third house <laughs> on the right, Melbourne Road extension." Oh. So we pull in. The, he pulled, said, "I pulled in the driveway. I, you got out of the car. I asked for the keys. I, <laughs> you told me the house was unlocked." And it was. I walked in. I sit in the living room, fall asleep. He went in the kitchen oh. and made a sandwich. Sat down, <laughs> made a sandwich, and then went home. <laughs> right. And then I obviously somebody heard me. You know, like uh, oh, wow, what was they it Goldilocks the or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> Who's been sleeping wow. in my bed? And uh, yeah, called the cops. They ended up. Uh, That's what happens. Yeah. You know, and and um, w w your wife, uh, your situation with your wife there. Uh, how did did she respond to your uh, drug alcohol addiction? You know. I'm sure another thing never discussed, you know, it wasn't discussed, but she did drink with me and then I introduced her to cocaine and so we were both, you know, weekend party, or, you know, party animals and uh, going out and... Uh, did you have any children at this time? Yeah, I had three. And wow. did they see it? Did they know about it? They saw it. They were young at the time. You know, my oldest uh, was probably 11 at the time, which like definitely... Aware, and, and, you don't, yeah, you know, again, yeah. no discussion of it. It was, it was just that was it, you know. Um, and how, how how did it affect uh, the situation uh, in the family? I thought everything was good. To tell you the truth, yeah. as bad as it seemed, mm. bad, you know, <laughs> we lived somewhat of a normal life. You know, we had uh, we we had a little ski boat. We went to the, you know, to the lakes and water skied and were involved with their sports and stuff. You know. Just those weekend, you know, I realized, I realized now looking back, a lot of Sundays I was hung over and spent a lot of time sleeping on the couch or falling asleep and not coming out with them. So I, I, mm. I, I was very, very active in their lives, but that, though, the Sundays and stuff, and I'm sure they knew, you know, yeah. that they're, you know, don't touch uh, daddy, you know. And what's said that in, in our society, that's almost, ac that's acceptable. Normal. It's normal. Oh, yeah, normal. I know. Because you got everything. You got a home, you got a kid, you, you got, got a marriage, you got a everything boat, is cool. You got money. You got a boat, yeah. money. You, you, yeah. you think, everything you is think, cool. You think yeah. everything's all right, Rosa, right? But it's right? a road to yeah. destruction. Well, you know, the other thing, too, that I learned later on, to, uh, th their friends were probably going through similar things at home. Right, right. You know, I mean, there were a lot of divorce situations right. and the kids were living. Yeah, yeah. Destruction. So. Yeah. To and, destruction. And, and basically, <clears throat> um, the bottom line is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, it's a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. Um, because you're not thinking about your soul, you're not thinking about eternity. You, you're just thinking about what's going on today in, in your fun. life. That's fun. And basically, oh. that's what what's going on today yeah, yeah. with our well, society. It's, yeah, it's been you like know, that. Yeah, we for, would talk with our friends and stuff, and we had no idea really what hell was like. We thought you thought you could get out uh, pretty simple, and then if you didn't, you didn't. You weren't afraid. Yeah. There was no you know, there was no question. I'm going to hell. Like, yeah. like it's just a yeah. uh, matter of fact thing. Well, you know, people That's talk. You know, when pe say. in people's language, you know, you hear people say, it, "Today it's hot as hell. Yeah, it's cold as hell. Oh, yeah. I see you it, in it, hell. Like, yeah, 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 or, yeah. or it's it, th this restaurant I went to was crowded as hell. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I saw a sign that once said, "Muffins straight out of hell," you know, and it's hell is in the soul, yeah. and people know it's there. And the devil lies to the people about the way to get to heaven. Just do good, and it'll you know counteract all your bad yeah. thing. That's oh, the yeah. farthest from the truth. So, it's so what, really what was the that, catalyst, yeah. Wayne, that that kind of uh, drove you drove you to Christ? Well, 
at one point, my wife, uh, we were doing coke, and she just wasn't, she didn't seem the same. Something seemed different, and we weren't, again, they always say it's the communication in a, in a marriage that usually breaks it down. Well, we weren't really communicating, you know, but uh, I saw a change, and, I, and my thought process was that she was getting, the cocaine was affecting her. Yeah. I was fine with it. I could mm -hmm. handle it. Which it does. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, and I, and so I'm, I'm looking, uh, I went to the library, took out a couple books on the effects of cocaine, uh -huh. and I'm reading the books, and, uh, you know, um, as I'm reading the books, I'm doing cocaine. Wait, wait, I've got oh, lines, wait, wait, out, I've got wait, lines wait, out of cocaine. In the library? <laughs> no, I took the books out. Oh, okay. no, no, no. So, so Not that I wouldn't have done it So you library. want to know the effects of cocaine, <laughs> yeah. and you're doing it at the right, same time. Yeah, but, but I was under control. But, but it, it's, it's, it's normal. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. And and oh, no. and no, no no and that's how warped the mind gets. Oh yeah. Because what's right is wrong in today's oh, society yeah, sure. and what's wrong is right. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And so so what did you find out so about So what I thought was I thought she by the literature she had all the signs of uh, you know, being affected by cocaine. She had them. She yeah. had it. Not you. Sure. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you okay. I could have, I could have been a counselor for. Her. <laughs> um uh. so I went home uh, she had, she, I knew she wasn't going to be home, so I went home looking for her, her own private stash of cocaine. So I'm looking around. So I finally I looked between the mattress and the box spring. I looked it up, and there's this whole group of paper, you know, papers from a court. Uh, it, was a, it was the uh, divorce papers. I was going to be served with the divorce papers, which I had no idea. Wow. I, I was so blind to what was going around us, I had no idea that she wanted a divorce or that she had gone to a lawyer and it had it all, uh, you know, mapped, all out. mapped out, written out, and I was going to be served. Within a few days, I was served. It was devastating to me. I had no clue. As bad as it was, I thought I was happy. I thought we were happily married. I thought we, you know, we lived in a waterfront community. Um, you know, my father. We, I'm in the auto wrecking business. Business was thriving. I was doing well. Uh, my wife was a, a stay-at-home mom. I mean, you know, in in today's standards, it didn't get any better than that. Right. Um, so I was I was really devastated by it, and I didn't know how to handle it, except I did know that God was the way to handle it. I just didn't know how to get to him. You know, I, and I, you know, I, went to, uh, uh, I went to a priest and uh, he, to get some help, because that's how I was growing up, and he reaches into his pocket after I told him everything I'd gone through, and he pulls out a bottle of tranquilizers, and he said, this is, um, this is what I use. This should calm you down. I'm thinking, this isn't, this isn't. I answer. mean, the priest didn't tell you that Jesus will calm you no, down. No. That Jesus no. will. And again, this that, particular priest, no. No, no, no. In other words, that no. tranquilizers is not going to calm you down. Yeah, no. No. It, no, no. It's ha having a relationship yeah. with and I went, Christ. And I went to the Norwalk Hospital, uh, the hospital uh, to get, you know, I figured if I at least understood I had a problem, at least my wife would maybe think, that, okay, listen, he's, he's looking mm -hmm. to straighten this out. Yeah. And they told me I was an alcoholic. Uh, that I should att attend these meetings, and I did go to meetings. And it, to me, it was like we we go to the meetings, then I'd go out to the bar with my friends, and we go out over the list of why you're an alcoholic, and yeah. we laugh, we joke, you're an alcoholic, you're not. We're all alcoholics, and we'd laugh, mm. you know. But I had a a friend, a, a business, a, a customer of mine in business. We sold cars, we sold wrecked cars. He owned a body shop, and he was a born again Christian. He was a really nice guy. But I, you know, but he would always mention Jesus, and that would be a little uncomfortable. And I would always like kind of like skirt. Oh, oh, Jerry, you know, listen, uh, thanks. You're gonna, I'll have that car delivered. Let's, you know, and then I'd leave. But he was always, he wasn't like, um, I mean, aggressive to the to the point where he was obnoxious. He would just, you knew what he was about. That's that right. was it. <clears throat> so I, I, I'd go on a bunch of routes, and I called him, knowing that he had a better connection to God. Mm -hmm. In my head, I really assumed he had some kind of like red phone in his office that he could make mm, the call. Can reach God. Hey, listen, go down and take care of Wayne. He needs your help. <laughs> um, so I said, "Could you pray for it?" And he said he would, but I'd like you to come over. And I, I really didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go in any any serious born again situation. I just wanted God to deal with it and go back on my life. I had no, I, you know, no thoughts of stopping drinking or cocaine or anything. Um, so I did go over there. We prayed. He led me in a sinner's prayer, and I was really desperate for God to, to step in. I really was, mm. um, and and I did. You know, and some people have that experience where everything just changes automatically. And nothing changed, but I, I, I did sincerely reach out to God, mm. and I went on for months and months uh, mm. still drinking. and, and, uh, mm. and uh, Just briefly, because we're running out of time, just briefly tell us how you stopped drinking. Well, 
I had, like I said, I'd been going to a Bible study. I'd been hanging out with Christians, but I still was drinking. One night, I, as usual, on a weekend, I went out. And doing cocaine. Cocaine time. and drinking. So I'd go on, uh, this was a Friday night. I had to work on a Saturday. Uh, coked up, drinking all night. I mean, you know, I was like, you know, a rum, drink a bottle of rum like it was nothing. I get home 4 o'clock in the morning. I had to get to work by 7, and I couldn't fall asleep. So I had to fall asleep. So I said, I poured a big tumbler glass of whiskey, put drank straight whiskey, straight whiskey, drank in a it glass, in a glass, just drank it down. Because you had to get to bed. I had to sleep. And you can't something. go to bed on yeah. cocaine. Yeah. So I had to go to sleep, drank it, fell asleep, woke up in time a little before you know 6:30 before I had to go to work. Woke up totally sober. Mm. Um, I mean, like like I never had a drink at all or no cocaine effect. And then never touched it again. That was uh, thir close to 30, 30 years ago. 30 years ago, God delivered you <coughs> from taking what Satan have you love, mm -hmm. and God turned it around for him to deliver yeah. you from it. You know, I feel bad for atheists. Yeah, you know, they turn to I, I really feel bad for them because they don't have a clue no. about where they're going when they die, and they don't have a clue about how they to survive this world outside of the way that you tried to survive it, Wayne. Right. You know. And so many of us do, you know. Mm. It's, uh, it's amazing it, what God will do. Yeah. Yeah. Just Trust put your him. heart out there and seek God. He knows what we need, uh, He for knows sure. how to handle it. We yeah. don't. So yes. he's, he's a miracle working God. Well, Definitely. Wayne, thank you so much for coming on our Thanks for having program me. today. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank mm. you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Bible today uh, in America um, is looked at like just a, a piece of um, fiction book, unfortunately. Um, many, many people look at it like that. But it's the Word of God. And he says that if anybody be in Christ, there'll be a new creature. The old will pass away and all mm -hmm. things will become new. It's true. Wayne's a new creature because of Jesus. You know, you too can be new. Receive Christ into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. And the lights might not go off like it did for Wayne. Didn't, didn't do it for Wayne right away. Six months later, he got delivered from cocaine and alcohol. Yes. Trust in the Lord. He's the only one that can bring you through. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching our broadcast today. Tune in next week for another great testimony. No, I won't ever fall down. You'll always take my hand to show me that I can. And through it all, I will stand. No, you'll never leave me. You watch my spirit.